Hi everyone, welcome to the library's program this evening on reducing stress. Uh, we are lucky to have with us this evening Lydia Skiljan from uh, Lake Health. She's the health and wellness coach, integrative medicine manager, and the Inspire Weight Loss Program. And she will take it away and teach us everything we need to know about being stress free or reducing stress anyway. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Again, I am Lydia Skiljan, and so I'm going to be working through some techniques, techniques with you this evening on reducing stress. Um, as Amy mentioned, I am the wellness coach here at Lake Health. And at the end of the presentation, I'll give you my address and any contact information. I am at the Brunner Send and Dietrich Wellness Campus on Market Street in Mentor. So I mentioned earlier, and I will say it one more time, what I'd like everyone to do is make sure that you are in a comfortable place. So whatever that means for you, we're gonna be here together for about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how many questions you have. So if you need a blanket or some pillows, um, if you wanna put a sign on your door that says, do not disturb, if you wanna grab some water, a piece of paper, a pen for notes. Also, I'd like you to have something that you can eat. We're going to eat this mindfully. So maybe a piece of chocolate, a pretzel, a cracker, uh, raisin, whatever it is that you like. And I'll pause for just a minute here so that everybody's able to get that. Go ahead and get what you need and come on back. Maybe use the restroom if you need to. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Tonight's topic is reducing stress. And just to go over a little bit about what we're gonna do. An overview is we're going to define what stress is, because if we don't know what it is, how can we understand it and work through it, right? We'll discuss its effects and how we experience that. We'll explore ways to reduce stress, and then we'll practice those techniques to reduce stress. And so what I'll do is right now you're muted. When we are actually doing the um, techniques, we'll open that up for questions so that we're sure that you are understanding what I'm guiding you to do. Um, you can either use your chat button and, and type it in, or we can, or you can unmute yourself and you can ask the questions directly. So I'll pause sort of during each technique and at the very end, we'll open it up again. So if you have any overall questions, um, you can ask them at that time. All right, so what is stress? So stress is a physical, mental, or emotional factor that causes bodily or mental tension. Okay, is that good or bad? We're not really saying anything at this point, right? So physical, mental, emotional, it causes bodily or mental tension. Stress is the body's reaction to any change that requires an adjustment or a response. The body reacts to these changes with physical, mental, and emotional responses. Okay, straightforward enough. So our body is, the whole part of stress is actually our body sensing this change. Something's gone on in our world where there's a change and our body senses that and now it's called to action. It needs to do something. So we're exposed to a change. It creates tension or stress. We adapt or we deal with it or we take action. And then there's a euphoric feeling. So this is actually part of the definition. There's a euphoric feeling and a release of positive hormones in our body. So we don't always think of stress that way, that there might be a euphoric feeling and a release of positive hormones. And we'll explore this deeper. Stress creates a need and an ability to take action. All right, so here's what happens in our body. We're gonna call this the fight or flight response. So our body releases adrenaline, cortisol, and epinephrine. So we, we know those as stress hormones, right? So those are released. Our heart rate and our blood pressure increase. Our body is alert, focused, motivated. Our breathing is faster and deeper. Glucose, or we, we often think of, of glucose as sugar, is produced by the liver. So you have energy. Muscles are ready to go. Body is ready to go. Muscles tense for action. Digestion slows or stops. Okay, so let's think about that. Have you ever felt this way? Have you ever felt this way and had it turn out in a positive response? Do we have any exercisers out there or runners or people who do public speaking? Right now, my body's going through this reaction. <laughs> I'm having a little fight or flight, a little nervous, ready to go. So I might talk a little fast for a while, but I'll settle into it and use my, my stress-reducing techniques to overcome that. 
this, this response isn't always negative. And it can actually be used in a useful way. Think about when you've been in your car, maybe driving, and somebody cuts you off. You go through these reactions very quickly and you might slam on the brakes or swerve your car or so your attention's laser focused. You know what to do to get out of that situation so you don't have an accident. So fight or flight is that reaction that is still a stress response. But so think about then when you're done and you've avoided the accident, you might have a euphoric feeling or a release, right? You might be exhausted. Um, that's the fight or flight. So it can be very useful. Or maybe you've had a child that has darted out into the street and you, you immediately go into action and you stop them, right? Or somebody's falling and you immediately help them. That's all fight or flight. And so it can be very useful, but it can also be positive. As I mentioned, if you exercise, think, look at these, this list here. This is the response of somebody who exercises. Think about running on a treadmill or whatever it is that you do, maybe biking. When you're really getting your body going, this is the response. So, so think about a warm up. So you're starting to move gradually. Your body's sensing that, that's the change. Your body says, hmm, something's going on. So all of these pieces start to go into play and then you're, ex you're able to exercise at a higher and higher rate. Okay, so that is, that is fight or flight. All right, so this can be a good thing. So what's the problem? So here's the tiger chasing us. This is fight or flight. If we go all the way back to many years ago, um, the response was probably literally, you know, fighting for your life, right? Let's, let's even go back further. Let's say cavemen and they see a tiger, they see a dinosaur, whatever it is they see, and they have to either fight this thing off or they have to run and hide in a cave, right? Fight or flight. So they do what they need to do. Maybe they fight it off, they win. They're exhausted, they're euphoric, they're happy. Um, that's how it's supposed to play out. That's how our body was made, is to then have that release. So what's the problem? Here's the tiger, what's the problem? The problem is our everyday life, our current life. We don't ever stop running from the tiger. Okay, if you exercise and you're done, you're good. But what if you had to run on the treadmill 24 seven, which is a little bit of what we do in our brain. We keep our, our stress going, sometimes with our thoughts, sometimes with what our, our world is doing around us, right? Our emotions can do that to us as well. So we need that release to get the euphoric feeling. And that's what the problem is. And so we're gonna talk about some things that we do um, oh, the way of looking at things. We have something called rumination, where we kind of go round and round and round with those thoughts and worrying or regretting the past. So we can actually extend that fight or flight to be nonstop. Our body needs the reset. Okay, so what does it feel like when we're under stress? Here are some symptoms, some basic symptoms of how people react to stress. And so as you're going through this, take a look and see if you can relate to any of these. Or maybe you even have more that you don't see on the list. We're all very unique. So we all have different responses to stress. Tense shoulders, maybe a backache, a headache. Maybe things that we don't even think about that are stress related. Um, so over and under eating too much or too little sleep a lowered immune system. So maybe we get sick a lot or um, we can't quite fight that, you know, that cold. Even having something as simple as having um, issues with your eyes, infections in your eyes, pink eye, that's all a part of stress. So if you're under a lot of stress and you find that you get eye infections a lot, that can be part of it. Maybe we're irritable, we're angry, we're tearful, depressed. You might have that rapid, shallow breathing, that quick breathing. So some of these are more of an immediate response and some are more long-term, right? Maybe we grind our teeth or we have a clenched jaw. Um, maybe our dreams are, are upsetting. We talk faster, we have nervous energy, migraines, anxiety or a panic attach, attack, even an eye twitch, nervousness, low energy, digestion issues, rapid heartbeat, memory issues. So I have a, a close friend that was really concerned that maybe she was um, getting early onset dementia. And I was 99% sure that it was the stress that she was under. And she went in and had some testing and, and sure enough, that's what was happening with her. Um, she was, it can affect the way that you think and the way that your mind reacts to things. 
So you, we don't want to downplay it, right? Acne, sweaty palms. And again, you may have a lot of other things, symptoms that you experience. We're all unique. There's no right or wrong. These are just some common ones. Okay, so what can we do about this? What should we do? So the four things that we're gonna work on today are breathing, mindfulness, meditation, and self-care, okay? All right, so let's start with breathing. So go ahead and get really comfortable in your seat. Nice tall spine. We're gonna look at something called diaphragmatic breathing. So we, this has a lot of different names. We can call it deep breathing, abdominal breathing, belly breathing, paced respiration, or diaphragmatic breathing. So sit up nice and tall. If you wanna roll your shoulders a couple times, you can just to kind of release some of that tension. And we're gonna begin by breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just a nice relaxed pace, just be comfortable. Okay, uncross your arms, uncross your legs. And so what we'll begin to do is actually send that air down into your belly. So inhale through the nose and I want you to feel as if your belly is expanding. And exhale out through the mouth and the belly comes in. What we're aiming for is our diaphragm. So if we look at this picture, our diaphragm is actually below our lungs. Okay, so inhale. We see the, where the air might come down into our trachea, our windpipe, and come all the way down to that diaphragm and fill up that, that area. So that diaphragm will drop down as we have, take a big inhale, and then it will come back up as we exhale. So we're pushing that diaphragm down. Let's not use our muscles to push the air, but let's just allow the air to sink down into the belly as if our belly is filled with a balloon. Okay, so take an inhale through the nose and feel the belly expand, exhale out, and let it go. You might wanna put one hand on your belly, okay? Nice tall spine, right? Head directly over the spine, nice and straight, so we don't wanna to lean to one side or the other, just nice and tall. Put that hand on the belly, inhale, and we'll feel, feel a little movement in that hand. Exhale out, and the hand goes back in. And so just breathing in this way, getting used to this. Inhale, down to the belly, exhale, back out. All right, we're gonna add on. If at any point you get lightheaded, completely normal, completely okay, you can take a little break. You're getting air into some areas that maybe haven't, haven't had air down into them. We're actually pushing down into those lungs so that we get to the very bottom of the lungs. You wanna fill the entire lung. Your lungs are pretty long. We're, we're talking all the way down to the bottom of your ribs, okay? So we're gonna inhale. For a count of four, we're gonna hold for a count of seven, and we're gonna exhale for a count of eight. Don't worry about the count quite yet. On our exhale, we're gonna exhale out through our mouth. And so we can do this with our tongue on the roof of our mouth behind our teeth. So inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. You can hear that whooshing sound, we're going around the tongue. If that's uncomfortable or seems too confusing, then you can just exhale through pursed lips. So like you're blowing out a candle. Okay, so inhale, pause, exhale out through the mouth, either pursed lips or around the tongue that's on the roof of the mouth. If you have any respiratory issues, okay, if you have, um, you know, if you have lung issues, then you'll want to just use the pursed lips. You don't want to put the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And you also don't want to hold your breath quite as long. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the count here and I'm gonna count for you. So the count is inhale through the nose for four, send that air down into the belly, hold for seven, exhale slowly out through the mouth for a count of eight. We're gonna give this a try. So the important piece of this is that you're exhaling twice as long as you're inhaling. And I'm gonna make this a pretty rapid count so that we're not holding our breath too long. The, the, the amount of time doesn't matter. It's just that you're exhaling twice as long as you're inhaling. So as we're thinking about this, we wanna make sure that it's a nice big inhale so that we can then hold and exhale for twice as long. All right, 
Let's inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more time. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, breathe normally. And how does that feel? Just pay attention to well, how this feels in your body. Again, you might be a little lightheaded, that's okay. That's okay. And so what I'm going to do is actually send out some uh, handouts with information about the 478, so you don't need to take notes. I just want you to experience this. Um, all right. And so you, you can repeat this two or three times to get the practice of this. Okay, so when should we do this? When should we breathe like this? So our brain really likes habit. So if we say, oh, I'm gonna do this every time I'm stressed, probably not gonna happen. Our brain is gonna to go to what our habit is when we're stressed. It makes it easier for our brain, that's why it does this. Um, doesn't have to think, doesn't have to make decisions, we just go to what our go-to is. So what we wanna do is create a habit of the breathing. So we can create triggers to practice it. So whatever it is that you're gonna attach, you're gonna attach it to a cue. It might be at a red light. It might be when you get up in the morning, when you go to sleep at night, um, before a meal, after a meal, something that you're already doing consistently. You just wanna add this practice to it, okay? So think about that for a second now and decide what you're gonna attach this breathing technique to. And if it feels overwhelming with the numbers and the counting, you can just do belly breathing. You can just breathe in through the nose, down to the belly, exhale out through the mouth. Simply doing that will quiet your system immediately. This is an immediate thing that happens. So if you're feeling stressed, just take a nice big deep breath, okay? When we're stressed, as I mentioned earlier, we tend to chest breathe. So that would look like, let me move back a little, that would look like, Right, we lift our chest. We don't want to do that. We want it to be a nice belly breath. I'll show you. So in that breath, I didn't move my chest at all. It's just sending it down into the belly and back out. And I'll tell you a little story. So um, a friend of mine had some heart issues. He was having some, some rapid breathing. It, it, he didn't know what was happening. His heart rate was picking up pace. So I had him do the four, seven, eight breathing. And after two rounds of it, his, his heart just kind of clicked in and calmed down. So anytime you're feeling stressed, you're feeling maybe a little a rapid heart rate, do your breathing, do what you need to do. If you think there's an issue, call 911. Calm your system down. Okay, so think about your cue. What are you gonna attach it to? And then set a goal. Maybe starting tomorrow or starting tonight, you're gonna start attaching this or just practice the breathing. Okay, so that's diaphragmatic breathing. That's number one. If you've just done this with me, you probably feel a little bit calmer, hopefully. What else are we gonna work on? We're going to work on mindfulness. And what is mindfulness? So mindfulness is a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment, while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations. It's basically accepting what is, whatever you're doing right now. So if you're mindful in this seminar, this webinar, it is just taking in everything that we're doing, not thinking about the to-do list, what else you need to do, not thinking about what's going on behind the door, children, spouses, animals, whatever's going on, coworkers, just accepting into this moment right now. So an easy way to say this is to be here now, right now. So taking in our senses, our senses really help with this. And nature is a, is a beautiful way to do that. So if we look at this rose, right, if we use all of our senses, we'll go through all of them. So sight, we see this beautiful flower, beautiful colors. We can, if, it were, if we were in nature, we could smell the beautiful scent of the rose. Um, we can touch the leaves and how soft the petals are. We might hear a bee buzzing nearby. Um, what did we miss? We don't want to taste it probably, so that would be our fifth sense. So just using all of our senses to experience what it is we're going through right here, right now. 
if you find yourself getting caught up in your thoughts, um, in worries or, or regrets, take it down into your senses, whatever you are doing. It doesn't have to be nature. It can be um, the pencil in front of you. It can be brushing your teeth. Being mindful is all about being with the experience that you're experiencing. Okay, so we are going to play a little bit here. We're going to mindfully eat. So we can do this with our, while we're eating. And so for people who might have some eating issues, some food issues, this is a great way to kind of quiet that, or even just a great way to experience uh, mindfulness. So get your item, whatever it is that you're going to eat. And I want you to go ahead and pick it up, put it in your hand. And I want you to pretend that you are from another planet and you've never seen this item before, whatever that is, pretzel, raisin, cookie, chocolate chip. Pretend that you've never seen it before. And so we're looking at it, we're holding it in our hand and we're looking at it. And what does it look like? It has different textures and different, different colors to it, taking in all those senses. And we have it in our hand so we can touch it. So let's, let's pick it up and maybe pass it from one hand to the next and feeling the texture. What does that feel like? Have we ever felt that texture before? Is there a softness, hardness, coarseness, smoothness? And maybe you have some thoughts arising, like why are we doing this odd experiment? Uh, let them pass, let them go right on through. Just keep experiencing this with your senses. Pick it up and smell it. What do I smell? Maybe put it near your ear. Do you, does it make a sound? Move it around in your hand. Does that make a sound? Am I feeling or am I hearing or uh, something about the way that I'm touching it? All right. And so now we're going to take that and we're actually, as we near it, our, near, put it near to our mouth, is our mouth watering? What's happening with our body? How does our hand know where to put this? If we say we're going to eat it, our hand already knows how to get that to our mouth. Go ahead and put it in your mouth. Don't bite it, but just let it sit on your tongue for a second. Hmm, what's happening here? Is our mouth watering more? What's happening here? Is the texture changing as we let it set on our tongue? And go ahead and take a bite, just one bite. Does the texture change? And then continue to very slowly chew on that item. And is the texture changing as we chew? And what's happening? Where is it in our mouth? Does it move from one side to the other side? And when you're ready, go ahead and swallow. And what is that experience like? What's the sensation going down your throat as you swallow? Does the taste change? Is the taste gone or does it linger in our mouth? So again, really keying in on all of those senses. And what's the sensation once it's gone? So can you imagine spending a whole meal experiencing food in this way? That's mindfulness. And so for a lot of us, we are eating while we're typing on our computer or watching TV or driving. And so being mindful is really just doing one thing at a time. And it's really important for our stress to try to do that, to try to spend time with just one thing at a time, particularly eating. It takes about 20 minutes for our stomach to tell our brain that we're full. So if we're eating quickly, if we're eating our meal in 10 minutes, we might think that we're still hungry, when actually our, our senses haven't had a chance to even know if we're still hungry. So that's an area you can really work on. Try to eat mindfully without TV, computer, phone, whatever it is, right? Peacefully, calmly, mindfully. Okay. And think about what surprised you about that practice. And try it again. Try that experiment again. Okay. And so we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to a little meditation. I think you'll enjoy this. And so there are very many different types of meditation. Um, the one that we are going to do today is called progressive muscle relaxation. And we are going to go through each part of our body and we're actually going to contract the muscles in that area and then release them. And so that's one type. There is a body scan where we just pay attention to our body parts, 
kind of like the eating, where we're just paying attention. What are we feeling? And we're, we're actually going to start all of this with a little body scan. We're going to start by quieting our senses. So we're combining a few types of meditation. And at the end of our, our seminar, our webinar, we're going to, um, I'll give you resources where you can actually find different types of meditation for free. So I think what I should probably do at this time is open this up for questions. If you have any questions about the mindful eating, you can go ahead and I believe you can unmute yourself or you can just type in the chat, the little chat. There's a little symbol that shows like someone's talking. You can type that in and we'll be able to see that and I can answer any questions. So I'll pause for a second here to let you ask questions. All right, well, we'll keep moving on. And if questions come up again, after, so after the meditation or actually during the meditation, when I start setting you up, go ahead and ask questions if you have them. And then once we're in a place where we really don't want to be interrupted, I'll let you know. Okay, so let's give this a try. Go ahead and cross the arms, uncross the legs. And we're going to get back into that nice tall uh, position. And so you can do meditation laying down. You can do it seated. If you have the space and the availability there to lay down, you can go ahead and do that. Um, don't fall asleep. Uh, so yes, get comfortable chair, lay down. If you need to put your blanket on as we lower our heart rate, we may get a little chilly. So you can cover yourself with a blanket. If you need to prop some pillows behind your back, I just want you to be completely comfortable. There's really no wrong position for meditation as long as you are comfortable. If you are laying down, just to give you a few tips, um, it can be helpful for the back to put a pillow or a bolster underneath your knees if you're laying flat on your back. Some people find it helpful to put a pillow behind their neck. So just be comfortable. Okay. As I mentioned, we'll be starting with shutting down our senses. We'll actually start with breath and then we'll shut down our senses go into a little bit of a body scan, and then into our progressive muscle relaxation. Okay, so to begin, start with your breathing. Inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. We're not worrying about counting, we're just breathing in that good clean oxygen, exhaling out any tension, any stress. Inhale and exhale. And on your next inhale, go ahead and let your body rise a little bit taller or lengthen if you're laying down. Exhale out all the stress and tension from the day. Let go of any thoughts about your day or what's coming up next in your world. Breathe in and breathe out. Arms and legs are uncrossed if you're seated. And we're gonna go ahead and begin to shut down all of our senses. And we'll begin with our sense of hearing. We'll take our hearing outside the room and try to hear the, the sound that you hear in the most distance, so the most distant sound. Just becoming aware of it, not judging it, not even naming it, but just acknowledging it. And bringing your hearing inside the room. You might hear a clock ticking maybe a heater making noise or your computer or phone. Not having to name it or judge it, but just acknowledging. And go ahead and take your hearing inside your own body. You might hear your heartbeat or your breathing, maybe swallowing not judging, just allowing. And let's go to our sense of sight. If you haven't done so already, you can close your eyes or you can lower your gaze if that's not comfortable to close your eyes. Just finding a spot to look at with your eyes lowered. And we'll go to our sense of taste. Should be fairly quiet. You might still have a taste of what we were eating earlier and that's okay, not judging or naming. And go to your sense of smell. Just acknowledging. And now to our sense of touch. 
You can feel your body on the chair or floor or bed. Feel clothes on your skin, maybe shoes on your feet. You might feel a sore joint or a tight muscle. Not trying to change it, not judging it, just allowing it to be, just being aware. And so a little body scan, kind of starting at our toes and working our way all the way up, just being mindful of every part of our body and what we're experiencing, not changing, not judging. Starting with our toes to our ankles and feet, calves and knees, thighs, hips, torso, our abdomen, our back, and just acknowledging what you're feeling, what you're sensing up to the shoulders, down to the arms and our fingertips, up to the shoulders and the neck, the face, top of our head. And again, focusing on our breath. Breathing that air in, nourishing oxygen, exhaling out tension and stress. Breathe at your own pace, inhale, and exhale, and allowing your rhythm to be relaxed. Breathe at your own pace. And for the next part of our work together, I'm gonna to ask you to tense various muscles. Please do this without straining. You don't need to exert yourself. Just contract each muscle firmly but gently as you breathe in, and then you'll let the muscle relax as you breathe out. Don't worry about doing it wrong. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Sometimes it's easier to be aware of our muscles if we contract them first. We might not even know that they're stressed or contracted. So if we contract them a little bit more, then we are able to relax them a little bit more. All right, continuing to breathe. Breathe in and bring your awareness to your feet and toes. As you breathe deeply, gradually curl your toes down and tense the muscles in the soles of your feet. Hold your breath and then release the muscles in your feet as you breathe out. Feel the tension in your feet wash away as you exhale. One more time, breathe in. As you breathe in, tense the muscles in your toes, curl them under the soles of your feet. Hold. Exhale and let those muscles relax and breathe out. Your whole body is becoming heavier, softer, and more relaxed as each moment passes. Now bring your awareness to your lower legs, to your calf muscles. As you draw in a nice deep breath, point your toes up towards your knees and tighten your calf muscles. Hold. As you exhale, breathe out and let your feet relax down. One more time, breathe in. Point your toes towards your calf muscles, tightening the calves. Hold, exhale, and let them relax down. On your next inhale, we're gonna tighten the muscles in the fronts of our legs. So you're gonna do this by digging your heels into the floor. So inhale, dig your heels in, hold, exhale, and breathe out. Let the legs relax. One more time, breathe in, dig those heels in, Tighten the muscles in the front of your legs. Hold, exhale, and let them relax. Breathe in and breathe out. Your muscles are slowly relaxing bit by bit. On your next inhale, I want you to tighten the muscles in your buttocks. Hold, exhale, and release and relax. Let those muscles go. One more time, breathe in. Tighten the muscles in your buttocks. Hold, exhale, and let those muscles relax. Now bring your awareness to your stomach. Draw in a nice deep breath and tighten your stomach muscles by pulling your belly button into your spine. Hold, exhale, and let those muscles go. Let your belly relax. One more time, inhale, pull the belly button back to the spine. Hold, exhale, and let those muscles go. Bring your awareness to the muscles in your back. And as you slowly breathe in, arch your back slightly, bringing your shoulder blades together in the back. Hold, exhale, and let those muscles relax. One more time, breathe in, arch the back slightly, bring your shoulder blades together in the back. 
hold, exhale, and let those muscles relax. Breathe in and breathe out. On your next inhale, you're gonna pull your shoulders up towards your ears and squeeze those muscles firmly. Hold, exhale, and let your shoulders relax back down. One more time. Inhale, bring those shoulders up to your ears, squeeze the neck. Exhale, let them relax all the way back down. We carry a lot of tension in this area. Let it just relax. Feel the heaviness in your body. Enjoy the feeling. Feel yourself becoming heavier and heavier. Feel yourself becoming more and more deeply relaxed. You are calm, secure, at peace. Now we'll let go of the tension in our arms and hands. So we'll start with our upper arms as you breathe in. Bring your hands to face your shoulders and bring them all the way up to your shoulders as if you're doing a bicep curl. Hold. Exhale and let the hands come all the way back down. One more time, breathe in. Bring your hands up to your shoulders as if you're doing a bicep curl. Hold, exhale and bring them all the way back down. Now we'll focus on our forearms, our lower part of our arm. So as you inhale, I want you to bring your wrists up towards your forearms, pointing your fingers in towards your elbow, hold. Exhale and let them open up all the way. One more time. Inhale, bring those hands in towards your forearms. Hold. Exhale and open your hands all the way out. Bring your hands all the way back down to your legs. On your next inhale, we're going to tighten our fingers. Bring them into a, a fist. Clench your fingers. Hold. Exhale and open them up and relax. One more time, bring them in, clench them into a fist, squeeze your hands, hold, exhale, and open them up. Let them relax all the way down. Your hands are becoming very soft and relaxed. Your arms and hands are feeling heavy and relaxed. Take some nice, long, slow breaths in and out. Feel yourself slipping deeper and deeper into a state of complete rest. On your next inhale, we're gonna tighten the muscles in your face by squeezing your eyes shut and clenching your lips together. Breathe in, tighten the muscles in your face, your eyes, your lips, squeeze. Exhale and let them go completely. Now inhale one more time. Scrunch the muscles in your lips and your eyes. Hold. Exhale and let them go. Now bring your awareness to the muscles in your jaw. Take a deep breath in and open your mouth as wide as you can, tightening the muscles all around your jaw. Hold, exhale, and let your mouth close completely. One more time, inhale, open your mouth as wide as you can. Hold, exhale, and let your mouth close gently. Fill your lungs with air on our next inhale. We're going to tighten all of the muscles in our entire body. We'll start with our toes and we'll work our way all the way up very quickly, just tightening every muscle that we just did. So go ahead, take a nice big inhale, curl your toes, dig your heels in, tighten your buttocks, your abdominals, your back, squeeze your hands up, squeeze your face, tighten your shoulders, hold, tighten every muscle that you have. Exhale, let all of the muscles relax all the way down. Breathe in and breathe out. One more time, we're gonna take an inhale, curl those toes under, tighten, dig the heels in, tighten the buttocks, tighten the abdomen, tighten our fists, our clench, our face, our, our shoulders, everything tighten, tighten, tighten. Hold, exhale, and let everything go. Let everything relax back down. And take a nice deep breath in and a deep breath out. You are completely relaxed from the tips of your toes to the top of your head. Allow your body to relax deeper and deeper. Sit with the sensation, just experiencing your body at the moment. Nice, deep, slow breaths. 
There's nowhere to be, there's nothing to think about. If thoughts arise, just allow them to pass on through. Don't push them, just allow them. When we try to fight what is, we tend to create more stress. So just allow whatever is happening for you right now to happen. And breathe. And when you are ready, we'll come back through our senses. So being aware of our hearing. Bring our hearing into the body and then into the room. Noticing our sense of smell and taste. Back to our sense of touch, we experiencing in our body. And finally, our sense of sight. So gradually open your eyes gently. Bring yourself back into the room. Now let's go ahead and if you have any questions, type them in, unmute yourself and ask questions. We'll sit here for a little bit and go ahead and ask any questions that you have about this practice. Hopefully no one fell asleep. Okay, well, I'll keep going. And, and again, you can always type those in and, and we will see them and answer them as we go. Um, so a lot of times with meditation, we can just focus on one thing. Maybe you're just focusing on your breath. And in that case, sometimes it's, uh, it's easier for thoughts to come through. I like this one because we are really focused during the whole meditation on what we're doing and we're, we're actually engaging our body and our muscles. If you were trying a meditation where it's not quite as active and thoughts come through, it's very normal. And if you notice that there's a thought coming through, then you're doing it right. You're using your attention muscle, okay? And so the fact that you've noticed it and you're just kind of allowing it to go means you're doing it right. So if you were to do a bicep curl or some exercise, every time you use that muscle, it gets stronger. So every time you notice a thought, you're, you're working on your attention muscle for it to get stronger and better. So it's okay if that happens, perfectly okay. It's actually good because then you're noticing it. Noticing is the first step. So that's perfectly okay if you're trying a different style. And at the end, we will talk about some different styles. We will, I'll give you some resources that you can go to. Okay, let's see. All righty, so that is meditation. So let's talk about a few other things that we can do. Okay, so some other considerations for stress reduction. Exercise is really important. Um, it increases our feel-good hormones like endorphins. It can be a mindful activity, so you can be very focused on what you're doing. It can provide social support if it's done with others. Um, you can't exercise your way out of an imbalanced nervous system. And what I mean by that is we have a lot of people who may be, you know, working away all day. They're, you know, I want to say a type A, not that that's a bad thing, but they're working really hard and they're, they're focused and they have goals and they're doing this all day. And then they go home at night and they go for a run and they've got a lot of goals about their running. And, and so you can't keep that up nonstop. I'm not saying that you can't run, but maybe looking at exercises as a release and a way to maybe um, balance it with something like yoga or um, stretching or even just walking, but making sure that there's some downtime, there's some slow time. But exercise is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful for stress. Um, and maybe you like that hardcore run to just let it all go and you sweat and that's okay. Uh, but you want to be working on your nervous system as well. So you want to be not always in fight or flight, if that makes sense. So for a moment, think here, how can you get more exercise in? Does it need to be an hour? No, not at all. If you can get exercise in for 10 minutes, that's okay. If throughout your day, you're sitting at a desk, um, try getting up every hour. There are some great apps on our phones, on our computers that remind us to get up and walk around. Um, a standing desk, a treadmill desk, um, sitting on a stability ball can be helpful because then we're, we're engaging our core just to stay balanced. Um, even just tapping our feet up and down in our chair. If you just lift your toes up and down, 
you are actually sending, that's your, your calves are your main muscle for getting circulation into your body. So if you can tap your toes up and down or even march in your chair, I'm doing it while I'm talking to you, so I'm moving. But that will get the blood circulating through your entire body, all the way up to your brain, which is important. So just getting some movement in your day is really important um, and will reduce that stress. Sleep, sleep is hugely important. Um, adults need seven to eight hours of sleep a night. There are very few people, there are some that can really thrive on five to six hours, but mostly not. And you might think that you do, but pay attention to the signals um, of, of maybe not getting enough sleep. Are you tired throughout your day? Are you less focused? Are you, um, you know, nodding off? Do you find that you're have an appetite for things. So I'm not saying hunger. Hungry is different than appetite. You crave, um, you know, certain foods. I'm going to call them uh, battle fuel, and we'll talk about nutrition in just a second. But are you craving carbs, heavy carbs? Some of those things may be a sign that you're not getting enough sleep. Um, but set the stage for good sleep. Have a nice, peaceful area in your room. Um, don't take your electronics into your bedroom if you can help it. Don't have a lot of clutter in your bedroom. I know these are all things that maybe they're on your to-do list, but it's important to have that nice, peaceful space. Um, the, actual, the ideal temperature for a room is 68 degrees for sleeping. And I'm giving you a lot of details, but I just want you to have an idea of what we're talking about. So I don't have slides on that. I just kind of want to kind of maybe talk about that a little bit, is what's, what's the ideal situation? Um, being supportive, right, in your neck and, and how you lay. And then preparing your body for sleep. So comfortable clothes, maybe even a little massage on your feet. Um, lavender is a great essential oil for, for resting the body. You know, if you need, if you've got light coming in your room, that can disrupt sleep. Even if your eyes are closed, you, your body senses that light. So covering a clock, maybe using an eye uh, mask, something like that, so that you don't have, you don't have light in your room or sound. So thinking about how you can get some better sleep. And these are, all, these are all talks that we could have on those topics alone, right? We could have an hour talk about sleep and how to get good sleep. You know, when we talk about nutrition, water is really important. But if you're drinking all of your water after 8 p.m., that's going to disrupt your sleep. You're probably going to be up during the night using the restroom. Okay, here we go. So setting goals. Setting goals is important for reducing stress. So if we're using a systematic approach, we can reduce the uncertainty, the stress of uncertainty. Okay, so making a list, having lists, writing things down, being able to check it off the list. Um, if you find yourself at night thinking about all the things that you need to get done the next day, maybe have a piece of paper next to your, your bed and writing it out, and then you can let it go. You can truly let it go. Um, but having that, that sheet of, of goals. Um, if your goals are too big, if you're thinking, oh, I want to lose 50 pounds or I want to start my own business, that can be overwhelming and that can actually trigger that stress response. But by making smaller goals, well, then, you know, then this month I need to do this and this week I need to do this and today I need to do this. So, so making smaller goals, that can be helpful. When we're stressed, it shuts down that problem solving ability. So we want to, to set those goals. And so as a wellness coach, I help people reach their goals. That's really what I do. And it can be goals with fitness, nutrition, stress, life, work, family, whatever it is. Um, and a lot of what we do is, is setting small, shorter and shorter goals, right? Starting with, at this moment, what am I going to do? And so at the end, I will give you my contact information. So if you have questions about any of that, you can always reach out to me via email or you can give me a call and I can help you with a little bit of that. All right, moving on to nutrition. So food greatly affects your energy levels and your mood. So, you know, tying that into sleep, if you're drinking a lot of caffeine late in the day or sugar or alcohol, some people think that, you know, a few cocktails at night helps them sleep. It can help you fall asleep, but what happens is there's a rebound effect and it can actually cause you to wake up during the night and then you're awake for a longer period of time. Okay, so it's a depressant but then it, it, there's a rebound effect to that. And it can also act as a diuretic. So it can make you have to use the restroom a little bit more. Um, caffeine and alcohol both can be dehydrating. They're diuretic, so they make you urinate more. 
going into a lot of detail, maybe you don't need to know, but think about what you're eating, what you're putting in your body and how that can affect your stress, right? Maybe you have caffeine to give you energy, but then is that making you jittery? Or are you dropping afterwards? Like after the caffeine is worn off, are you going into a slump and then do you need more caffeine or more sugar? Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, stress can create a craving for battle fuel. So think about if you were going to, if you needed to, to support that fight or flight reaction, you're gonna want carbs, right? You're gonna want some carbs, but carbs, plain carbs, white carbs tend to let you drop. So you have, let's just say a donut. So you eat a donut and you have a very short sugar high, so to speak, but then you're gonna drop and you're gonna want more. So what you wanna do is eat for sustained energy, some protein, some fiber, and that's gonna keep you full longer. So whatever your meals are, whatever your snacks are, make sure you're including some protein and some fiber. Okay, so I do, and you can, you can pop in at any time. I'm gonna talk, but if somebody comes in, I'll be quiet. I'm gonna um, put some resources up on the screen. Um, I think that I would even have time for another meditation if we wanna do that, if you don't have questions. But let's, let's bring the resources up and we'll look at that, and that way if you have questions about these, you can ask. So, these are many, many, many resources. There are so many books. Um, I started to write this and I thought, oh, there's just too many to mention all of them. I don't have experience with all of them. I do have experience with some of them, but they've been recommended to me. Oh, I've got my little the one. I've got a space where I don't want it. Okay. So just some different ones. The first one is um, one that was out for 2020. They, I found a list of uh, mindfulness books for 2020. So I try to find some things that maybe people haven't heard of before, and then other ones are maybe 30 years old, but they're they're great. Um, and I always mispronounce his name. Thich Nhat Han, one, two, three, four down is he's been writing for many years and has some great books. Um, and then Charles Duhigg is Power of Habit. That's a great one for looking at how do we. How do we create habits in our in our world and why it's so hard to change those habits? Really good resource. That one I have read um, and use it daily uh, with people. And so if you're thinking you want to change some things to help you be less stressed, you may find it really difficult. And you're thinking, oh, I'm not motivated enough. I'm just not strong enough. And that's not true. Don't beat yourself up. It's all about our brain and our brain loves habit. So we want to use it to our advantage. So this book helps us with how can we do that? How can we get rid of the bad habit or start a new habit um, successfully? It's, it's much easier than you think, but if you're going about it the wrong way, it can be extremely difficult, almost impossible. So really good. Um, so yeah, just some different ones. Dan Harris is a great one, 10% Happier. I did read that one. He is a uh, newscaster who had a panic attack on live TV um, and writes about his journey with that. He's um, amazing. And so I'm going to also list his app that he has, that you, he has different mindfulness instructors and meditation and just really great, great resource. Um, and when we get to those, there are some that are free right now that they're allowing, they're opening up for people to use with, with COVID uh, for free to give you a try, to let you try it and see if it's something you want to use. So these are just some books, again, so, so many. All you need to do is Google mindfulness books, meditation books, and a ton of them will come up and there's always a little synopsis and reviews and they all have good and bad, but maybe take a look and see what might fit your needs. Okay, one more list of resources. So these are some apps and sites. So that 10% app is um, from Dan Harris and he, so almost all of these, you can access part of it for free. You can look at something and then his particular app, if you are a healthcare worker, um, a frontline worker, teacher, work in a uh, store, in a restaurant, so many different areas, you can actually access it for free, the entire site for six months for free. So if you just put it in your, your Google, your search engine and say, try, it'll, it'll pull that up and there's a link and you can go. Um, that one I'm really enjoying right now. Um, do yoga with me is a site they have some great meditations and and so what you're going to do so i'm sorry i'll keep going so calm app another great one headspace great you can search for guided meditations you can search yoga nidra which is a different style of meditation um, you can search by the amount of time you can search by a theme so i will put in 
Um, and sometimes I'll put in like rain sounds if I'm up during the night and I just want something to calm me and that, that will pop up and you can have 10 hours of rain sounds. Um, fabulous, fabulous stuff that we can get to. Um, sleep, you know, meditation to fall asleep, meditation to release anxiety. So all these different things you can put on your, you can search for and it will pop up. And I use my phone, um, try to keep it not too close to my head. Um, and Spotify is a music, known as a music app, but you can also find meditation on there. There is a breathing, and I think I always mispronounce this, I've seen it both, GIF, GIF, and it'll give you the pace. If you're not sure if you're breathing at the right pace, it will slow it down for you. And so you, you just put it in and start it, and the little face will expand, the face will expand and contract, and it will, it'll pace your breathing for you. So I think a general rule of thumb, just try to breathe slower. Breathe in nice and long, exhale nice and long. All right, while we're waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and put up my contact screen. So this is me um, and I'm at the Wellness Center on Market Street. It's the Brunner Sand and Dietrich Wellness Center. We have the Live Healthy Fitness Center here. It's a, a fairly new building. We've been here about three years. Uh, Market Street is off of Route 615. I gave you my email, my phone number, I'm in integrative medicine. So in integrative medicine, we look for more natural ways to heal the body. Um, we have a lot of different practitioners just to tell you what that's about. We have uh, doctors who do acupuncture, chiropractic care, Reiki, massage, uh, reflexology. We have a dietitian. So all different, all different things that we do over here. Uh, but I'd be happy to answer any calls or if you wanna send me an email, you have a question about any of this or just some more resources, I can always help you out with that. Um, I do coaching with people and that can be in person or on the phone or via a video just to help people get to their goals, whatever that goal is. And sometimes it's a lot of meditation and breathing, um, but we do it together one-on-one. -on -one. So whatever it is that you might need or what question you might have, you can always reach out to me. Any other questions? In the chat, I'm just seeing some comments about great recommendations. The relaxation was a nice experience. Thank you so much. Good. I don't have any other questions yet. Anybody else? Are we still have Lydia? And you can always look at the Lake Health site as well. We do have free webinars. We're, we're really getting into that right now, which is a wonderful cooking webinars and they're free. Great. Um, stress reduction, whatever topic, if you're interested about, maybe I mentioned some of the practices that we do, if you're not sure what Reiki is or reflexology, we're gonna have some of those discussions on what it's about and what to expect. Um, yeah, we're, we're home, so let's learn as much as we can, right? So uh, yeah, so check out our Lake Health website. And Lydia, what's the address for that? Oh, that is a great question. Um, I think if you just put in the search engine, Lake Health, it'll pop up. We have a brand okay. new website, and so you can explore in there, and then there will be a tab on, I believe on the first page that says, uh, calendar or classes and, and schedule. So, yeah. All righty. A couple more thank yous. Thank you for sharing your expertise. Thank you. I think thank we're ready to wrap it up unless Lydia has anything else for us. I could do a quick, quick note their meditation if you'd like. I guess let's poll everyone and ask if they'd like one more meditation. Let's see what I have here. It's up to you. We can do a quick one or, or we're good. Whatever, whatever you guys would like to do. If you're nice and relaxed, then we'll just let it go at that. Or if you'd like uh, a slightly different one, we can do that as well. I'm excited for you guys to try all these things. Please don't, don't put it off. Get on your phone, get on your computer and just experiment and play and you'll see what resonates with you. You'll see how your body responds. Really pay attention to your body. It'll tell you what it needs and what it wants and what it likes. I think everybody's quiet and relaxed. I don't, I don't okay. see anything. You, could, you right. could go ahead and do a meditation and they can just drop out if they don't want to. That's true. Uh -huh. I can do that. Okay. Let me, I've got a couple here that I like. So, all right. We'll just do another. I will say thank you for now in case anyone does drop off. Thank you for joining me. This was, this was a lot of fun. Um, I hope that you find peacefulness in your day and, and stress-free, a few stress-free moments every day. Find some time for you. Self-care is so important. Um, and there was a great book on there. I'm circling around to uh, Neff, Kristen Neff on self-care and self-love. And it is so vital. And sometimes people feel um, selfish when they think about that. Self-care sounds selfish. It's not. 
you can't help anyone else or be there for anyone else if you're not there for yourself. So really, really important, especially right now. Okay, all right. So we'll just go into a little meditation here. So if you'd like to, to stay on, you may. And so we'll just get into our, our meditation space. Again, uncrossing the arms, the legs. You can uh, lay on the floor, you can stay seated, whatever works for you. And we're just gonna begin our breathing in and exhaling out through the mouth. And breathing in and breathing out. And these are just cleansing breaths, cleansing out the old, bringing in the new, fresh, and breathing in and breathing out and go ahead and close your eyes shutting down our senses once again close the eyes bringing that attention into the body just quickly going through our sound our sense of sound what do we hear outside the room inside the room and then within our own body sense of taste sense of smell, just acknowledging, letting them go. That's a touch. Do we feel our chair on our body, clothes on our skin, sore joint, sore muscle, wherever you're at, just acknowledging, just gunning through and letting the mind quiet. Focusing on that attention muscle, just paying attention. And I want you to notice how you're approaching something new. Are you getting frustrated or being easy with yourself? Try being easy with yourself. When you try something new like meditation, don't judge yourself. It's human for our mind to wander. Like our lungs breathe, our mind wanders. It's very, very natural and normal. Let your thoughts pass through. And I want you to notice, what is your jaw doing? What is your mouth doing? We very often carry tension there. So what if you just allow it to relax without any effort, not trying to change it, but just allowing it to relax. And breathe in and breathe out. What I'd like you to do is focus on that breath. Focus on where you experience the sensation. So find a spot, maybe it's your nose, maybe it's your throat as the air goes down your throat. Maybe it's your belly filling up or your chest or lungs filling up and really focusing on where you're experiencing the breath. What I'd like you to do is on your inhale, I want you to recite a mantra to yourself internally, quietly. And as you breathe in, I want you to say to yourself, breathing in. And as you breathe out, say breathing out again, quietly to yourself. And so breathing in and breathing out and set your own pace. Breathe at whatever pace your body wants you to. Breathing in and breathing out. And when you notice your mind having thoughts, just gently bring yourself back to your mantra, knowing this is the exercise, knowing you're doing it perfectly right. We're going to do a little body scan. But this body scan is going to include our emotions. So we're going to start with our toes. And as we progress through our body, I want you to notice any emotional sensations that you experience. And there may be none, and that is completely good, completely fine. But just acknowledging and feeling whatever you feel. So starting with your toes and working your way up through your feet, your ankles, your calves, knees, and thighs. 
upper buttocks and hips, abdomen, lower back, upper back, your heart area. Sometimes we carry a lot of emotions there. So just acknowledging, just noticing. And if you're having any difficult emotions, maybe in your stomach, maybe in your heart, just sitting with them, not judging them, not trying to push them away, but just acknowledging and sitting with them. And you may try this another time where you just sit with an emotion and not try to change it or push it away. And continuing up into our neck and our shoulders. Again, another area where we can carry tension or feelings, emotions. Taking that scan down the arms into the hands and up into the head and the face. And we carry emotions in our head as well. So what's there for you? Not changing, not judging, just experiencing. And accepting what is. Just feeling grateful at the moment for spending this time today on yourself, on your self-care. Acknowledging that gratitude for yourself, for your time. Being gentle on yourself. And you may think about starting your day every day with some gratitude. Taking 10 seconds, 30 seconds to just be grateful for three things. See how this resonates with you. Does that feel like something you might want to do? Every morning when you get up, you can be grateful for a warm blanket, for the fact that you woke up today, for comfy pajamas, whatever it is. It can be very simple and maybe carrying that sensation throughout your day. So letting the body scan go and just feeling the way you feel in the moment. Breathing out, big inhale, big exhale, letting it all go. Coming back to our senses, back to our hearing, acknowledging what we hear in the room and in our body. Going to our sense of taste and smell, to our sense of touch in our body. And when you're ready, back to our sense of sight and opening the eyes gently. And just going about the rest of your day calmly and peacefully. And I will say namaste. The light within me salutes the light within you. Thank you for joining me.